morning. What time did you get here? 10, right at 10. Yeah. You pulled, did you bench immediately? Are you... I benched them for half an hour, and then they warmed up too much. They were moving faster than I could bake them. Yeah. yeah. And then the pear rhubarb cristatus, you've done them all? Uh, I, I have the... I can do those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, or just the cristatus. Whatever you want me to do. I'll do the pipes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> It's never pleasant, I don't think, for anybody to set an alarm for 1.30. Do we have any pears in the walk-in or are they all out? I usually have about three hours of sleep. The first hour is hell. Yeah, they're, they're getting softish. I mean, they're just gonna ripen really quickly. Perfectly ripe Danju pears. And my favorite kitchen knife that the rest of the kitchen makes fun of me about because it's a cr really crappy knife. Phoebe, I don't see... Walnuts. I know we have walnuts. Okay. Because they're labeled D's nuts and not I, walnuts. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell this is good pastry, how stiff it is. It's pliant, but it doesn't give like a, like a yeast dough. It has a mottled appearance where I can see actual butterflex. Once you're in the, the, the thick of your day, you're just, you're rolling. You're really, really rolling. I had so little of a plan. I just thought, I'm gonna set it up so people can come and sit down and order a coffee and order a sweet and then leave. Sold first through a community supported pie program then I sold at farmer's markets, and then opened the shop in 2010. I think, I think we should sell about a half dozen. What drew me to baking initially was I had been a line cook, and I hated it. I hated being the only woman in the kitchen. So when I had an opportunity to move over to baking, it clicked. It's a, a business of pleasure, whether it's scent or taste or memory. You know, a lot of baking is constantly battling memory. I, I never claim to make a better lemon chess pie than someone's grandmother. Didn't sleep, you know, a little, a little anxiety. Thoughts come here and there, ebbs and flows, in and out, being still in the moment to focus for, you know, whatever's to come. Hunter, your lunch is ready. Saltbox was basically trying to answer a question that my wife asked me. All right, babe, take it easy, love you, take it, have a good day. Bye, mommy. Take it easy, love you, take it easy, bye-bye. Hey, babe, where can I get a good fried fish sandwich? All right, son, have a good day, man. Love you, man. Good job, man. I couldn't tell her where to get a good fried fish sandwich. When I opened up Saltbox over on Mangum Street in uh, Little Five Points, and Darren was on the verge of transitioning. You know, I've seen that happen. I've seen that sort of evolution in a, a city or small town all of a sudden, you know, it's this way, and then it starts transitioning. Darren was healthy, so I felt comfortable. I felt like, okay, cool, this makes sense to me. So James, uh, we got the whole tilefish, uh, ringtail porgies, um, whole black bass. Okay. We'll see what they bring. We doing the bass hole today? Uh, no, um, you know, too big. The whole fish gonna be croaker. Yeah, croakers ain't no jokers. <laughs> I think I need a little more vinegar, I'm not sure. Um, hey, vinegar would pay more, more salt, pepper, more salt. Okay. Yeah, salt. Okay. I think so. I believe a lot of chefs will tell you the same thing. They like things that are simply done. We're, we're so easily impressed by somebody who's doing something more avant-garde and over the top. For me, that's fakery.